Hey everyone, Kyle here. Hey, welcome to week three of our series, Fixer Upper. You know, in this series, we're tackling growth as a family, not just as individuals. So money, it's something that is commonly thought about because it's part of every single part of our lives. Housing, rent, food, gas for our cars, school supplies, everything else. It's not like we can just ignore money altogether and boom, a problem solved, right? I've always thought maybe we could, we could be like penguins and just use rocks as money and, and life would be easier. But I'm pretty sure that we would all have the same problems. It's just a different form of currency. But money management is essential. And believe it or not, it's essential to start with God. God and my money? Well, there's where we tend to go wrong with money. All the money that we earn it isn't ours to begin with. You see, God owns everything. He made the world and all the money. He gave us the skills to earn money. God has blessed us with money so that we can take care of ourselves and our families. And maybe money is something that's tight in your family. Maybe it's something that, that, that you guys fight about. And if you're in that situation, I'm really sorry that you're dealing with that. I understand that that can be difficult. And you're probably thinking that you want a better future than that. So let's deal with the struggles of money. And the truth about money is that if we put God first in our finances, we're going to experience stability and his ultimate blessings. Putting God first leads to financial stability. Say that with me. Putting God first leads to financial stability. So what does God putting first in our finances mean? It means tithing. It means trusting that God will provide for you. It means supporting his church and his ministry. It means putting God first. You see, God gives us everything that we have. And when we love him and make him the leader of our lives, he expects that we trust him and give back to him. That is called tithing. So let's say that you earn an allowance of $100 for the week. That's a pretty good allowance. So remember that God blessed you with that. To tithe, or to put him first, means that you give the first 10% of everything that you earn back to God. So, 10% of $100 is $10. So you would take that first $10 before you spend the rest of it on anything else, and you tithe it to the church. No, this isn't some ploy or scheme for the church to get money. You know, if God wants your church to keep going, he'll keep the doors open. You see, God doesn't need our money. What he wants is for you to trust him with your money. And when we don't trust God with our finances, he doesn't truly have our hearts. And you know, you might be thinking, well, I'm a teenager, I don't need to live like this. I've seen kids who are so young start tithing. It's about trusting that God will provide for you and create stability in your life because he will create that stability if you put him first. Putting God first leads to financial stability. Say that with me. Putting God first leads to financial stability. So I'm sure a lot of you are thinking that you want a different future with money. You wanna make a lot of money and feel secure in life. So now our number one priority with our money should be tithes. And again, a tithe is when we give 10% of our earnings back to God. And not just any random amount, but the first 10%. And remember, I gotta say this again, it's, it's not some ploy for the church to make money and, and keep the lights on. You know, this is God's plan that he gives to us. And we see this lived out in the book of Malachi in the Bible, chapter three. I wanna read it for us. But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse, for your whole nation has been cheating me. You know, in this context, to cheat someone means you're not giving them what is owed. This is talking about how God gives us everything that we have. And in return, he asks us for 10% back. 
And when we don't trust him with the 10%, we're cheating him. You know, it might be weird to think about it like this when you're thinking about it as your own money, but that's why we have to remember that God owns everything. And so you might be thinking, wait, but, but I had plans for that money. Maybe you had your eyes on new shoes or a video game that just released. Well, this is when we should learn that whatever plan that we have in our lives, God's plan is 1,000 times better. Putting God first leads to financial stability. Say that with me. Putting God first leads to financial stability. Okay, so let's continue reading in the book of Malachi chapter 3 and see God's plan for us to experience His financial stability. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Did you hear that last line? Try it. Put me to the test. This is the only place in the Bible we see God gives us permission to test him. If we put him first in our finances, he will bless us beyond what we can even have enough room for. Let him prove himself to you. If you begin to trust God with your money, he will take care of you. He will always provide for you. But you have to begin by showing him that you trust him by putting him first in your finances. Putting God first leads to financial stability. So number two, how we can live this out is trust in God's promise of provision. We've said from the beginning that if we put God first and we show him that we trust him and not money, that he will provide for us. And what exactly does God provide? Well, let's continue reading on. Your crops will be abundant, for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fall from the vine before they are ripe, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Also, He provides whatever you truly need in life. That might mean that you don't necessarily have the biggest house or the newest car or the most expensive clothes. What it means, though, is that God will take care of you and your family. If you will show Him you trust Him by tithing and giving the first 10% to Him, He will take care of your needs and He will bless you. And I understand that you might not have a say in your family's financial situation right now. Maybe your family is struggling. You know, the one thing that I know that you can do is to begin to trust God first. Whatever you earn, no matter how big or small, make Him the priority. You might be thinking that your dollars won't make an impact in the church, but it makes an impact in your heart and in your relationship with God. Learn to trust Him now with your money so that you can trust Him later when you have a family to support. Learn to trust Him now so that you can model it for your kids or your nieces or your nephews down the road. Putting God first leads to financial stability. Say that with me. Putting God first leads to financial stability. Whenever there is a hardship with money, this is a time that families should be leaning on one another and growing in their faith as a team. This is the time to allow God to show you that He will provide for you. Be a family that is different from the world, just like our memory verse says for this series. But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. And don't forget that even if you don't have a way to earn money yet, you can still practice putting God first. You can do this with just about anything, not just your money. You can do it with your food by sharing with a classmate who forgot their lunch. You can do it by donating old clothes to someone who can't afford new ones. There are so many opportunities to trust God with what you have. Let's pray as we close out today. Dear Lord, you have given us everything in life. We are so grateful for you. Lord, as we reflect on that this week, help us to put you first in our lives, whatever that might mean, with our tithes, with our allowances, with our finances, with uh, our clothes, with whatever it is in our lives. Lord, help us to trust in you and put you first. Thank you so much for all that you have done for us. Amen. And remember, students, to start putting God first now so that in the future you can be different and create financial stability that only God can provide.